the 2021 Cadillac Escalade Sport Edition. That was my car and it is a complete otherly piece of junk. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I replaced the Escalade with this. So this is a 2022 GLS 450 and it is a much better car, although not as big as the Escalade is. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I replaced that car. Let's have some fun and let's talk about that junk. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I got rid of the 2021 Escalade that I bought earlier this year. Now, right now it's December 2021. I picked up a uh, 2021 Escalade in April of this year and it, it came almost fully loaded. It had Super Cruise enabled, it had a bunch of all the all the other good options that the Escalade, and I'm not going to get into options in this car, there's a billion videos on all the options and features of the car. So in this video I'm going to predominantly concentrate on what I liked and what I didn't like and what was the main reason of getting rid of the Escalade for this particular car. And there's no regrets. First of all, there's no regrets. I am super happy to be out of that thing and uh, here are the reasons why. So the main two reasons are gonna be reliability and believe it or not, comfort. So one of the main reasons I got rid of the Escalade was because of the reliability. And reliability on the Escalade, at least in the the model I got or at least in the one car that I drove was not there so I picked up the car in April and I picked it up like a Wednesday I think or Wednesday or Tuesday and by the next day it had broken what had happened was the entire adaptive cruise control system the whole cruise control system shut off that included super cruise that I paid extra money for it included just the normal cruise control and of course the adaptive cruise control that works really well. That whole thing had shut off and it was one day of ownership and I should have known that you know what, this is about to become absolute hell. Now I did take it back to the dealer. They kept it for a few days and I got it back. And it started working, but intermediately it would shut off and come back on. It seems like it was some kind of faulty wiring with it. Okay, so that was uh, the first day. Now comes the following month. And what happened was the following month, the whole camera system would shut off. I'm talking the entire camera system. No backup camera. When I put the car into reverse, no backup camera. When I put the car into, uh, uh, into augmented reality, you know, and there's clips of that I have that you'll see in this video augmented reality wouldn't work and that actually never really worked for me every time I push the augmented reality button it never really worked it worked when it won to work so when the backup camera system shut down I took it back to Cadillac they would keep it for about a week because they said oh they have to replace it they're gonna update it so they did now when that happened they gave it back to me a week later I picked up the car I had a loaner I picked up the car, returned the loaner. On my way home, it broke. Again, the same problem. No backup camera, no, no camera, nothing. Now, backup cameras are really important to a car like this because you think about with a backup camera, it, you know, parking a vehicle that size is not easy. It's not even easy to see around the damn thing because it's so big. Now, my wife drives the car quite often and she didn't like driving it without this camera. For me, it was fine. You know, I grew up driving without any cameras, so it was fine. So, first the camera. So, it broke on the way home, returned the car, kept it for another week. It's two weeks now, this car is gone. They decided to replace the entire camera system module or something like that, so it took a while for them to get the part. They replaced it. Now, good, okay, so it starts working, it's fine. About two months later, July, now it's about July, I gotta go somewhere. One of the reasons I needed a three-row SUV was because I needed to take my family out. So I replaced the car. I replaced the entire, not, not replaced, I uh, replaced my old Q7 
with I used to drive an Audi a 2017 Q7 with this S clip because I needed this bigger three row SUV. So now comes July, I want to take the family out, and all of a sudden I take the car around the block one Saturday and it starts making this banging noise. When I picked up the car, the service manager wasn't there and I never actually got the paperwork to see what that was about. Okay, so that was fixed. Never happened again. Now, the whole camera system kept shutting off and on. If I take a long drive, it would shut off by the time I get to the end. I would drive it back home with no camera. I would shut it off. By the time I wake up the next morning, it would come back on. This never ends. I return the car like this. Uh, one time, about, about about a month ago, took it again for a long drive, knowing that the camera system is going to shut off. Took it for a long drive. By the time I got to the end, to where I was going, we parked the car, we shut it off, put it back on. We came back. The whole sound system doesn't work. I'm talking, like when I put the signal on, you can hear it going tick, tick, tick. No turn signal stop. No sound coming out of that at all. No audio, no Bluetooth audio, nothing. So there's no camera, there's no audio. At that point, about, this is gonna come into the end of November now. At that point, I was like, this car has to go. It came to the point where we don't wanna drive the car anymore because it just so, it's so unreliable. I don't know what the hell it's gonna break next. We had something wrong with the engine. We have all these electrical problems. And it seemed like something was shorted and it just couldn't figure it out. I called the dealer back and I said, can you just take this car from me? Uh, give me another one. No, they don't have any in inventory. Okay, just take the car back. The dealer said, just drive it and give it to me. They can sell it to some poor, small, poor soul that's gonna now have all the problems I have. The dealer, it was a lease. Uh, for your information, this thing is about $1,700 a month. Sticker price was 104. And the dealer took it from me and just to clear and dry or something like that, clear and sign something like that. I just signed an odometer statement. They took it and I didn't have to pay them a dime. I walked away from the lease, walked away completely from the car. Uh, so the other reasons why I got rid of it was I told you was, I, well, I'm not too comfortable in it. One of the biggest issues I had with the Escalade was the Escalade actually, for my legs, now I'm six foot tall, for my legs was not comfortable. Now what I mean by that is, when you drive the Escalade, the damn brakes and the gas pedal, first of all, is like two miles apart. And the gas pedal is all the way down and the brakes is all the way up. So they're almost like this. So you have to pick up your damn foot to, to, to move between gas and brakes. I hated doing that. Now, this is probably a problem only for me because I do have issues with my, I have some spinal issues and it's just not comfortable. Uh, I, actually, I actually hated driving the car because sometimes your foot would go directly in between the damn gas and the brakes. It was so far apart. I wear a size 11 shoe and still it would go in between sometimes. And then you really have to pick your foot all the way up to put your foot back down. And because of the way the pedals are positioned, you have to sit all the way back. The taller you are, now if you, don't, if you like driving with your hands all the way out, it's fine. If you like doing that, uh, you're gonna be okay. And then you have to drop your seat all the way to the bottom so you can barely see, see anything over this giant vehicle. I actually like to sit a little closer to the steering wheel. I like the, to be more interactive with the car. But you can't do that with this car because you gotta sit seven miles back. So you end up driving like this all the time. You know, when it came to a long highway drive, it wasn't that much of a big deal because you were using Super Cruise. So you didn't have to keep your hand extended out for like hours and hours. I did put about 5,600 miles on this car uh, over, the, over the six, seven months. I was at April to December, whatever that works, it's six months or so that I owned it, eight months, whatever. And um, so because of my seat in comfort, now the seats are comfortable. The car is big. Yeah, oh yes it is. Tons of room in the third row, which I absolutely love because I was coming from a Q7. Third row access is great. Technology, whenever it works, is great. 
comfort is great if you don't mind the way your legs are positioned with the pedals and you have to sit all the way back especially if you're taller the older escalates which i thought this escalate would have had the older escalates had an option to push the pedals back now i do have a 2020 ram longhorn edition that has that feature you push a button and it pushes the pedal back this escalate keep in mind does not have that feature they removed that because they said they had more adjustable ways on the seat but i couldn't get comfortable in it while driving although the seat was nice and cushiony and your butt was happy sitting there um the driving comfort wasn't there for me i wasn't too comfortable driving it and because of the reliability and of course this comfort and the ability to get out of the lease was was one of the main reason i just would i have kept the car if i couldn't get out of the lease yes i would have still have it would i have cried every time i had to drive it yes uh would it have broken more it would have been three years of hell so i have been a mercedes driver for a very very long time i've driven i've driven s classes uh you know three different s classes now i've had so I've been driving Mercedes CLS. I've never had a Mercedes SUV. This is the first one. So we needed a big SUV. Now we don't actually use the third row too much. We wear it. We use it once in a while when I have to take my family around. And this one just suits our need. If your need is you need to have a car with that third row up all the time because maybe you got three or four kids and you just need to use the third row consistently. I can't imagine a better car than that Escalade or a reliable version of it anyhow. Any of the platform that it's built on, the Suburban, the Yukon, whatever is it that you like. Uh, but when it came to reliability, it just didn't work out for me. So that's the main reason why I don't recommend this car, just because of reliability. Now, they are making the 2022 model and maybe that's more reliable. I don't know. Uh, but comfort, reliability, let's get rid of it. Just to give you a quick thing, this GLS drives a thousand times better than that Escalade. That Escalade drove worse than my Ram. My Ram 1500 drives a whole lot better. For whatever reason, the Escalade was, I think it weighs less than the Ram 1500. It, it has more horsepower. I think the Ram is 390 and the Escalade was 420. But the Escalade felt very, very sluggish. Stopping power was terrible. You have to stop the brakes. Pickup power was ridiculous, even though it supposedly was under six seconds, zero sixty. Um, it was not a good driver. Now this GLS drives like a dream. This GLS is almost as good as an S Class. It really is the S Class of SUVs. If you have to choose between them, if you really need that third row, I then I would recommend the Escalade. If you can get by with a smaller third row that you use once in a while but there's enough room i sat in this third row my wife was driving and i just wanted to sit in it to see how it was i sat in it for an hour and again i'm six foot tall it was fine for me uh but getting in and out is not as easy as the escalate but this car drives a whole lot better but I mean, first of all it's based on a car chassis i believe um even though it doesn't have as much power it feels a thousand times faster it's decently large in size. You have a lot. You have a lot of cargo room. The technology here is amazing. Now, one thing before you know, before I end this video, I do want to talk about that the Cadillac has down that no other manufacturer has is the Super Cruise. Now, my Cadillac had it, and if you're gonna get an Escalade, please get it. Super Cruise is amazing technology. It is really hands-free. I drove it from New York to Washington D.C. Let me tell you guys, it drove itself. I am telling you it was weird because it 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 doesn't work all the time but when it does it works amazing the the super cruise map says it was going to work but it was some reason it worked on one side of the highway and it didn't like it worked going north but it didn't work going south on a good part of the drive there but when it was working it worked coming back home from washington dc was and such an easy drive it just drove itself literally it drove itself all the way from dc to basically next to my house next to a highway and it drove and it drove like a champ now i don't recommend super cruise in bumper to bumper traffic especially in new york city because our lanes are small super cruise keeps the, the the cadillac center it is a big car it takes up the entire lane and sometimes you can't drive in the center so i found myself turning off super cruise quite often in these smaller highways but when you're on a big interstate like 95 parts of it these much bigger lanes 
it's fine to use it. Except when a truck comes next to you, you gotta shut it off because you wanna move the car over and Super Cruise don't want you to touch it. So if you could get Super Cruise, get it. I highly recommend it, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of long highway drives. Trust me, it is the best of technology. This car has the drive assist package that does do lane centering and lane keeping. It works okay. It does, you know, on a nice straight drive. It's not as good as Super Cruise, but it's fine. I don't mind driving. Uh, other than that, that's that's what this video is. So now you guys know why I got rid of it. And uh, hopefully, if you get an Escalade or you're thinking of buying one, hopefully you don't get a lemon like I did. Uh, but if you need that third row, hey man, go ahead and get, get it with the Super Cruise. Do not buy it without Super Cruise. Uh, and hopefully you get something that's more reliable. Then if it was reliability and you don't mind sitting seven miles back from the from the pedals, go ahead and get it. If not, I highly recommend you get something else. And that ends this video. Hopefully you learned something. See you in the next one.